air and a bit sooner because I'm on stage and the sight of Paula Killen always makes my heart beat a little faster. Uh, Justin will need a little bit less air right now because he's about four whiskeys into it and a drunk breathes less. <laughs> Regardless, you need air. You will need water, but not for about three or seven days from now, depending on which Google article you believe. You will need food, but not for about two or three weeks from now. You will need sleep but not for about 48 hours when your brain starts to shut down. You will need shelter, especially if it's cold, but my phone tells me that in the next seven days, the low temperature will be about 45 degrees at night. So cold for sure, but no need to worry about the 36,000 homeless people within 40 miles of the stage right now. They are gonna be fine. We might add uh, that after the five basic needs, air, water, food, sleep, and shelter, we need, and I say this in all seriousness, we need our phones. <laughs> Quick informal survey. How many of you have looked at your phones, say, during the last two minutes of my piece so far? <laughs> Fuckers, I fucking see you. I see the little blue light on your eerie faces. I need that shit to stop right now. Seriously, how many of you have looked at your phones um, in the last hour? All right, how many of you haven't looked at it since the show started? I need to hug all of you right now. Thank you very much. So, um, I just, oh, I just found out how to do this thing on my iPhone 5. I, I really need an iPhone. I, I picked it up and looked at my phone 75 times today. What? Well, 76 now. 76 times. I would have sworn it was 10. This thing is lying where I'm lying. I don't know. What I'm trying to say is we don't really need anything, just this breath and this one. And if you don't truly need anything besides air for at least the next two or three days, what do you have left? Want. Want is what is left. Want is what moves us. Want is what drives us. Want is what makes us create. Want is what makes us destroy. Want is at the heart of it. Need doesn't get you laid. <laughs> Want gets you laid. Say you're on a date, you are, I don't know, uh, watching the very last right club at some CD bar in Echo Park during the height of the holiday season. You should be shopping or writing the next script or grading those papers or reviewing that presentation, but you are with somebody that you are very interested in, say. Maybe you are hoping later on that you will invite that person into your home. You'll continue the night. You know, you'll have fabulous conversation and you'll end up upside down on each other, you know, finding folds and crevices for your tongues, smelling their smell, feeling a closeness that will push back the darkness and make you forget all of it, about your sad past and your uncertain future, at least for tonight. And after one of us up here finishes one of our amazing pieces and the crowd erupts in raucous applause and Justin screams so hard into this mic, one of his lungs explodes. You only need one lung, by the way. You lean over your gate and you say, I really need you. you know, a baby needs food. A toddler needs safety. A middle schooler needs an advocate. A high schooler needs needs an $800 pair of sneakers. <laughs> a grown-up on a date needs you? Fuck that! You have a whole house full of need, a job full of need, a family full of need, a country full of need. You don't need that shit tonight. Tonight you want, you want, you want to be wanted. You want, want. Same scenario in the applause after Abby's story later on. You lean over, you put your lips on their ear, and you whisper, I want you. I want you. God damn, when is this fucking show gonna get over? Let's get the fuck home and get out of our clothes and see what we can discover right there. Fuck you, fucking fuck, that's awesome. Need doesn't get you laid. Need doesn't get you a job. Need doesn't get you hired. Want gets you hired. 
You're, I don't know, meeting huge TV producers around a big table high in the hills to pitch your latest TV series. They've just served yerba mate and fancy mugs with those crazy tube straws and talk about how amazing you are. And after pleasantries, they ask, why should we make your show? You say, because I need this. I need a fucking break. After all these years of these fucking meetings and after all these scripts and pitches I've written, I'm 30K in debt. I took the bus over here and I walked a mile up the hill because I had no room on my credit card to afford Uber. Pool. I use paper towels to dry off my sweat in the bathroom and I stuff them in my pits to try and prevent the pitting stains in this three-year-old shirt. I need this fucking gig or I'm back at Starbucks pouring lattes and listening to Ike tell me I need to clean the blender with more panache. <laughs> I didn't get that kid, by the way. I, I mean, one who hypothetically acted that way in a meeting like that wouldn't get that hypothetical TV pitch. Same scenario. You walk into that room, your Ramante is served, and they ask you, why you? And you say, because I want to make shows for people who are lost in their devices and in their lives, trying to connect with something they don't even know they want. Looking on their screens and seeing people who look like them, who speak Spanish and English like them, who know what it means to live three generations in one house, who know what menudo and pozole and ropa vieja smells like, who can tell the difference between a Mexican and a Guatemalan and a Cuban, who can see themselves on the screen as normal and flawed and funny and powerful. I want to provide a long-running series for the four dozen amazing Latinos, writers and actors and producers and directors I know who haven't been given the chance because they say there's not enough out ideas out there. Nobody's going to pay for them anyway. I didn't get that gig either, by the way, but I went in there with my want and not my need, and I left it feeling better. So the timer is telling me I need to stop, and I will because I want to leave you wanting more.